Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Welcome to our Crochet Podcast, episode 65. That is such a good number, right? I'm totally into it. 65. Welcome back to all my returning subscribers and friends. Thanks for inviting me over. If you're new and popping by for the first time, welcome. My name is Krista and this is a secret yarnery. It is just my yarnscape, my yarn stock that I have in my house where I pick my inspiration from and I like to keep it nice and plump. I'd like to be able to make whatever I want, whenever I want, and I think I almost can. Yay! I'm a total yarn enthusiast, obviously. I love it. I'm also into being frugal. I like things for a good price. I want it not just cheap, I'm not cheap, but I want good value. I like a good quality product, but I want a good price. So if you can find that balance, I am all about it. This channel is all about crochet and crochet related goodness. There's a podcast on Wednesdays, live chat on Fridays, and yarny goodness all throughout the week. So if those things are of interest to you, consider hitting the subscribe button down below and the notification bell beside that so you don't miss out on any of the fun. The first half of this podcast is all about crochet and then the second half kind of digress into what it is like living in Kenya. I am Canadian, but I moved to Kenya about 19 years ago already. So at the end of this podcast, I just kind of take us out and about either somewhere with my family or just shopping by myself somewhere where you can get a little idea or glimpse into what it's like living abroad. Finished objects. What? Love a good finished object. Oh, am I wearing one? Yes, I am. This is already a tutorial. Thank goodness, because I know you'd be asking. Isn't it fabulous? I love this one so much. So this is with Magic Glitz and Baby Cotton 100G, love it. It is the Aurora Dawn shawl with dragon tooth border. Let me show you the borders, because they are the bomb diggity. Let me see if I can get it folded up properly. There we go. So you can see both the borders at the same time. Why is it so hard to fold something? when you need to fold something. Check that border out. Isn't that cool? I'm in love with it. So that is Magic Glitz. Magic Glitz, I love it. I love it. It is such a great thing to wear because it's like so versatile. You can just like put it around, you can like literally cozy up in it or just kind of like drape it over your elbows or, you know, like wrap it totally around like a shawl, you know, like how you would, like, like that. Awesome. Love it. Temperature today. Let me get the temperature today because I'm, I'm feeling a bit hot for this. So it must be warming up. It has been a bit chilly here. I can't say chilly. It's been like, 21 degrees or 71 degrees, which is cold for me. Um, let me get the temperature. 23.5. See, that's the thing. <laughs> if it gets below 23, I'm, I'm, I feel it in the air, like I feel cold. The air is cold to me. So I got, it was like my first time this year getting cold and I was like, oh my, I came in the yarnery in the morning. I was like, oh my gosh, it's cold. Grab the thermometer. 22.8. <laughs> I am like, yep, that sums it up. <laughs> How sad. So for Fahrenheit, it is 75.2 inside my house right now. So I'm okay, but I do have like a fleecy skirt on and slippers and yeah, I'm a wimp. I'm a cold wimp. So that is my finished object. I also have this cute little pet bed there, which I will take you over to show you. So this is the little pet bed and so it's corner to corner in the bottom and then alternating rows of double crochets with singles going up with an increase on the corners. So increase, 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 and then a bunch more rows and then decrease, 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 decrease. So it pretty much goes like a sandwich bag, like a, you know how they fold 
so there's three layers and then inside I just have wrapped up like a fleece blanket you could use a towel and someone also suggested a pool noodle which would also be really great. So you could just take out your towel or your fleece blanket and toss it in the wash. You could also put it on top of a mattress or on top of a dog bed, and then it's just like a nice throw in the wash thing. This yarn is obviously fabulous, but it is, um, what is it called? It's right over here, let's see. This is my last ball, so I used eight. No, I also made slippers, so I probably used about six. Wool print, chunky, salmon, maroon, orchid, and red. Really great. It's 50-50. Oops. Ignore me. I want to make a big mess. 50-50 acrylic and wool. But I also have, sorry, I also have this batik chunky. Batik chunky, is that what it's called? Yeah, batik chunky to make... Uh, two more uh, pet beds. I think I need two. You need about six balls of chunky size five weight yarn. And this is 100% acrylic, but look at those colors. What a lucky pet. Don't joke. So those are my finished objects. I think that's all I actually have finished. Moving on to whips. <sighs> I'm loving the mam, Cal. Do not get me wrong, I'm loving it. I want to finish up all my MAMs before I move on. Now MAM is mile a minute, and it is a way of doing crochet that's super fast to make blankets and other accessories, like my shawl. So I am working on the colors I can use for my strips. My, like for my rainbow bed, my rainbow bed spread with lambkin. So I'm trying to get as many strips as I can get done in the colors that I have. I want to make it out of Saver 100, but now I have some Saver, and I think I might be loving Saver more than Saver 100, which is like super alarming, but I think it's also super true. So I'm using Saver for whatever I have. It works up a bit softer, I think. It has a bit of a shine to it. I don't know, but I'm really loving it like so much. So this is Saver 100 and this, these other big fat ones are Saver. And underneath is Saver 100 stripes down in the bottom there. So working on getting all the color, like the rainbow colors that I have um, into like doing the ones that I have. I'm, I feel like I'm missing like some yellows and some oranges, but I'm just gonna do with what I have and that is what I have doesn't have to be, anyway, I'll see. But I'm working with the colors I have instead of waiting and waiting and waiting for more yarn. So getting that done, or at least working on it. And also, <laughs> did you see it? <laughs> do, 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 do. This is as far as I have gotten with my husband's foot sack. So basically, it is like a, it's like making a super big handbag. So a chain along the bottom, and then, well, I just, I did foundationless double crochet, but then, then working around it in an oval, at, like you would for a handbag, and then increasing a bit, so your feet go inside here, and then you pull it up on top of your lap, so you'd be sitting like that, kind of, and with your feet down here, <laughs> and well, you probably couldn't hear me. <laughs> So your feet in the bottom where the black part is, and then underneath, once you get up to where your knees would be, you work back and forth instead of in an oval with an increase at the end or at the beginning of every row. So it overlaps a bit. So when you're sitting at your desk, you have more blanket to go over your knees. See what I mean? So this would be over and then on the sides, it gets bigger and bigger. So you can like, it goes way over your lap. You can sit cross-legged or however you want. This is with lambkin and merino chunky, merino wool chunky. I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> Set, so I have two strands together and I'm using a 10 millimeter hook. I used an eight millimeter for the bottom because you want that, you know where your feet are always pushing and stretching and sitting. I made that with an eight millimeter. You can kind of see the yarn underneath. So two strands at a time, just double crochet. And then with a 10 millimeter with the red on red. So 
there is the lambkin, and this is the merino chunky with it. Thing. So really liking that. It is heavy. It's kind of like a basket. This is the thickest one I've made. I made another one with chenille, which is fabulous, it's, but it's really floppy. And this is really kind of stiff, which I think I really like because it'll, it kind of almost holds itself up. It's like a basket, like half ba basket, half blanket for cold weather. Anyway, loving it. I've stopped working on it totally right now as of like a day ago. Like I haven't worked on it today. <laughs> or yesterday, I think I didn't either, because uh, for my husband's birth, my ball still attaches all a big mess now. For my husband's birthday, I don't want it done early. I still want to give it to him on his birthday, so I'm going to tell him I ran out of yarn or whatever, and then it'll be ready for his birthday, which is on Sunday. Okay, I'm not talking about it yet. Still crochet stuff, I know. So that is my fabulous foot sack. I, it would be great with Ancona. I just keep my ball inside it. Doesn't it also look like Elmo? Like it's honestly Elmo, straight up. I love it. Cool, right? Anyway, that one I'm working on casually. When it, it has to be cold out to work on that, which it has been. So working on getting my mams finished up, working on the foot sack for my husband's birthday, enjoying mams more than the foot sack just because it's like you know the two strands of yarn and the big hook you're like uh, uh, uh. it's great it goes by really fast but it's a bit repetitive and it's a big hook it's like a, it's like more work than just slamming out a mile a minute strip which i would prefer doing but i only have three balls left i think this is all the yarn i have left so two balls left of lambkin and well i have enough of the red i have tons of the red so that's another little thing I'm working on. So that's it for crochet whips, finished objects. How many whips do you have on the go right now? Let me know in the comments below. Just, you can just type in the number six, four, three, two, one, how, whatever your number of whips is. Let me know in the comments below. I have three, my rainbow blanket, my foot sack and my stool. I think I have three that I'm working on right now. Well, I can't say I'm working on my stool because I'm really just waiting to film it and I can't film it until my foot sack is done. And I also want my mile of the minute rainbow lambkin blanket done. So, but I'm, it's still on my list of things to do. I have three things on my list of things to do, like really on my list of things to do. How many is on your list of things to do? Hmm? crazy, right? I love it. I can't wait. I'm all about it. And I'm not starting any other type of project until my mile and minutes are finished. <sighs> so I'm telling myself, and anyway, I write it down. I said it. Is it true? We'll find out. And now Yes, it is subscriber of the week time. So I love my subscribers. I love you. You have, all of you have made this channel what it is, which I feel is like an amazing community. Everybody's very supportive, very friendly. We do have the occasional, what I call Richards, <laughs> but that's anywhere. And I think out of all the subscribers I have, there's probably about four people that have actually just been rude. So four out of like 57,000 is a pretty good ratio. When I started this channel, I really thought like I was expecting like half the people to be rude or like 25% to be rude or 10%. Like you keep expecting people to be rude. No, not really. No, there's so many of you who are fabulous and thank you so much for that. So as a way of saying thank you, I want to have subscriber of the week. We started with one subscriber of the week, but then when I'm going through like replying to comments and everything. There are people who have been with me since I started, since I didn't know what I was doing. Not that I know what I'm doing now, but I guess I'm more confident in not knowing what I'm doing. But when I was not confident and didn't know what I was doing, you're still here with me. So I want to include three new people who are subscribed to the channel and I want to appreciate and three vintage people who have been with me since the dawn of time or what I feel is the dawn of time or for a really long time. So we're going to have six subscribers of the week. So first off, we're going to start with my vintage, my vintage thank yous for bearing with me, being with me and encouraging me to keep doing this to meet the rest of you. So I would really like to thank Amanda H. Thanks, Amanda and Linny. Is it Linny what? I don't know, but I just call her Linny. You know who you are, Linny. 
Thank you so much for being you and staying with me and being my friends. And also Wilson Street. Yeah, baby, not her real name. <laughs> but love you, Wilson Street. Thank you so much for being with me forever. And I just want to say thank you for that. The three new people are so fabulous. And I just want to thank you also. First one is Stitch Itch. Hey, Stitch Itch. She has gone through my channel and watched like really bad videos. <laughs> Not really bad videos, but like all my old videos. She's really gone through it. So I just want to say thank you for taking the time to go through those videos and comment and give me your feedback on how things were going all the way through. So thank you so much, Stitch Itch. And also two other subscribers who I have not totally, uh, I don't feel like I've totally met them, but I have seen them and I just want to say thank you for being as cool as you are. And the first one is Sierra Scott. Her comment is, this is going to sound weird, but I don't crochet, but I do loom knit and I just started to knit a little. Loom knitting has taken my heart. Yet I watch every video you post since I find your channel a couple months ago. I love your vibe and everything. I can't get enough of your channel. Keep up the good work. What? You don't even crochet? That's awesome. I had no idea. I had no idea. So thank you so much. I, loom knitters are welcome. You're totally welcome. And another one is Mandy Pomeroy. So thank you, Mandy. Her comment is, uh, Sierra Scott, if you're weird, so am I. I loom knit and used to needle knit a little. Nevertheless, I watch every video she publishes. Thank you so much. How cool is that? Like that is such a great community. So thank you so much for, I have hair on me. I have Elmo on me. I swear I do. <gasps> I saw it. Okay, I got it. Can you see it? I think it's one of my hair. Anyway. Thank you so much, and I just want to thank everyone else who also is part of this great community because we're in it together, and you are what makes this what it is. So thank you so much. Now it's... Love a good deal of the week, and this week, get out of town. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me just clarify. Neither are like super on sale but they're so great that I just have to tell you about it. Starting with Ice Yarns, who has been stocking the website this last week? It has been insane, insane. All the new yarn, I want all of the new yarn. All of the new yarn is like everything that I would have dreamed of if I ever had a yarn company. They have like so much good stuff, which I won't even get into because I just want to tell you what I found this morning. I'm so excited. Cakes Glitz. Cakes Glitz. I'm not joking. I am not joking. What's Cake Glitz? 150 gram cake, same yarn as Magic Glitz in a cake with one color change. What? What? What does that mean and why am I so excited? Okay, Cake Glitz. Two, two cakes in a pack. They're $3.49 each, so $7 for two cakes in the same colorway as my Dragon Teeth. One color rotation, let me, get my, let me get my border back together for you. One color rotation per cake. And you, Matt, it's the exact same yarn as Magic Glitz. Exact same weight, exact same measure, like length and everything. It is Magic Glitz in a cake with one color rotation. So you could do the center of your piece, whatever you're making, a blanket, a cardigan, pillow cover, whatever you're doing, with the cake. So one gradual color change. And then border it with a ball of Magic Glitz with a faster color change. So your entire blanket will be the exact same yarn, but you have two options for how fast you want the color to change. What? What? Yeah, I'm all about it. Like, look, you can totally have it in the exact same yarn as I have, which I love, in the cake and in the ball of yarn. Ball of yarn's technically out of, or the skein is out of stock right now, but it'll be coming back. Are you serious? Oh my gosh. There's, uh, just think about what you can do with two different color change speeds in the same yarn. The same yarn, two different, like one, gradual over how many meters 300 and no longer it's 360 meters for in the ball of yarn so is it 520 or something in the cake anyway i'll tell you can you imagine 
Oh my gosh, amazing. That's brand new, it just came out. $3.49 a cake. <gasps> yes, I'm totally getting some, although I'm not ordering yarn this minute. I just ordered, like I have some on the way, but I'm totally getting some the next time I order. Like it's already in my shopping cart, let's just say that. But is it on an airplane? No, it's not. So excited. Second thing I'm all excited about from Amazon are my hair clips. Now this is not crochet related, but I got these I bought these from Amazon, when did I get them? January, I think? It was supposed to be for Christmas, but they didn't make it for Christmas. And when, I, when they arrived, I thought they were gonna be like way too big for my hair, because my hair is kind of thin. Like all my, each hair I have on my head is thin. I have skinny hair. But these are the bomb diggity. I don't use anything else now. They're so great. And they have a bit of like a rubbery finish on them, so they literally, they don't stick to your hair. Like they don't pull or pinch or anything like that but they also just don't like shh, slide out. Like they're great. They're pinchy, they're great, they're wonderful. They come in a box like this, or they come in this box, I should say. So how many, there's 10 in a box. You get five, I don't know how it actually, how they divide it up, but, oh, there's eight in this box. Oh, well now you can, oh yeah, there's eight. So they come in, in this box, which would be great for crochet hooks also. And you get, a few of these kind, they're not my favorite. They work really well, but I don't use them that much. And a bunch of these ones, these are the ones I love. These are great. Well, I think you get five of these kind and three of these for $12, $11.99. I always have them in my shopping cart because I would need to get more. I only know where two, I have three of these. I don't know where two of them have gone. Probably my handbag actually. But these are fabulous. So if you have long hair or you, your, any of your children have long hair, these are great to get. These are like really great. They're like my favorite and I don't use anything else. And I have a lot of hair accessories. So off topic, off crochet, but those are the bomb diggity. Go and grab some if you're into the long hair thing. The links for the hair clips and the yarn cakes are in the description box below. So just hit show more or the little arrow facing down depending on where you're viewing this from. And the description box will pop open and you can see the links and just click on the link. It'll take you straight to the page where those things are. Side note, anyone doing shopping through my Amazon links or clicking on a link to before they place their ice yarn orders, thank you so much. Literally, thank you so much. It means the world to me. It really helps me so much. It just kind of encourages me to keep going and doing this channel and doing what I'm doing. Kind of like some weird validation, but I really appreciate it. And thank you so much who, for everyone who has shopped through my links on Amazon or ICE. Thank you. And next. Yay, I love questions. If you have a question for me, leave it in the comments below this video and I'll answer it on the next podcast. So last week's questions, I have them printed out. Very small font, but so like, bear with me if I pronounce your name wrong, I really apologize in advance. First question is from Leona Gonzalez. She says, do you have a favorite animal, land, water, or air, or all kinds? Hmm. If I had to pick one animal, clearly it would be a dog. I love dogs. I don't think I could live without dogs. That's like my go-to. That's like zero. That's like baseline. Like I have to have a dog. And by dog, I mean dogza. Dogza. Like I'd love to be a dog breeder in like, when I was a kid growing up, I wanted to be a school teacher and a, and a dog breeder. Like school supplies, kids, and dogs. Perfect, right? Totally dogs. Rachel Kerrigan asks, what do you do with the projects you finish? Is there always someone in mind? I do keep my kids in mind, like for heirlooms. I'm like, well, maybe one day they'll like this, or this one will like this one later, or, you know, because I have four children. So I, kind of, I keep them in mind and what they would kind of be proud of as adults. Because they're young now, but I don't want any, like, I don't want a whole bunch of cray cray. I don't want a whole bunch of crazy crochet. I want everything to kind of, well, I do want it crazy. Don't get me wrong. But I keep my kids in mind and what they might like when they're adults or their wives or their husbands or their grand, or my grandkids. So I guess I keep my family in mind. Is that the short answer? <laughs> I should just say that. Emily Presley asks, what is your favorite African snack? 
hands down Mandazzi, love Mandazzi, was gonna have Mandazzi to show you, maybe for Friday's live chat, I'll ask her to make some. They're amazing, it's like bread that's cut into triangles and then deep fried, what? Kind of like a donut, but not sweet. I don't like them sweet, they're good sweet, but I like them just like, I like fried bread. What, I totally do. It's bad for my girlish figure. Uh, you can eat them like soba. Oh, don't start me. Definitely my favorite African snack. Little Blue Butterfly asks, why did it take 46 days for the ice yarns to get to you? Because customs didn't believe the invoice. Customs did not believe you can get yarn at that price anywhere in the world. They were like, that invoice is wrong. It's like, no, the invoice is not wrong. It's $1.75 a ball. They're like, no, it can't be. Yes, it is. Hmm? So we had, a little, we had a little fight. We had a little fight and my magic glitz took the hit. But I got my yarn. Rena Duran asks, wondering if you've ever ordered from Hobie.com. No, I haven't. So my trick for ordering overseas is first I have to find a freight forwarder and then in, the, in whatever country I want to order from. And I have not even really honestly looked for a freight forwarder from Denmark. So that is why I haven't ordered from them. Their yarns look great though, right? Totally. And I love Denmark. Love Denmark. Christine Deacon asks, oh, did your kids name the cockatiel whatever happened with your female's eggs? We took them away eventually. The budgie, who I think is a boy, would like hop up on her and then she laid a bunch of eggs and then every once in a while we just kind of take them out. She leaves them at the bottom of the cage. We kind of like take them out. I crocheted a bird nest for her, but she wasn't really interested in it. And yes, my kids did name, my five-year-old named the cockatiel. Everybody came up with names. What was the other one? Hans. Klaus, <laughs> and then Woody. We're like, okay, it's gonna be Woody. Shannon McAllister asks, what are the best stitches to use for making a quick, fast baby blanket? I would definitely, well, it would, it would depend. Either mile a minute is actually really fast if you are okay with like, you know, doing the slip stitch, the join as you go. That is actually really fast because in your head, you're not like, you're not like, oh, I have four balls left to do, or oh, I have to make it this big. You're like, I'm going to make eight strips, and then you're like, okay, I'm going to join two, oh, I'm going to join two more, oh, I have four more to join, and your blanket's done. So if it's going by time, and you're okay joining pieces together, definitely mile a minute. If you don't really want to join together, you just want to be working on one blanket, then Drunken Granny for sure. Both of those would be my go-to. I think mile a minute is faster. Do you think it's faster? Whoever has an opinion about Mile a Minute versus Drunken Granny, let us know in the comments below what is faster. Hmm? Mile a Minute, Drunken Granny. Mile a Minute, Drunken Granny. Let us know. Thank you. Angie L asks, wondering if you have tried Prim Hooks. Yes, I did. I have crocheted with Prim. It used to be, it was the nicest crochet hook you can get in Kenya uh, 15, 18 years ago. So I have used them, that's how I started to crochet. I used them for about a year and then I never crocheted. I, the largest thing you get was a four millimeter and I made a queen size blanket or I started to make a queen size blanket. It's now a really weird shaped skinny twin. Um, so yes, I have them. I use them, there's nothing wrong with them. I just don't like to look at them because of that blanket. I just have a bag, it's just like, oh, like the pain of it and how long I worked on I worked on it for about a month back in the day. Anyway, yes, Prim, they're not bad hooks. Not bad at all. Laura Hummel asks, have you ever used furls hooks? Yes, I bought three limited edition wooden furls, imported them to Kenya, was so excited, even waited to make my temperature blanket using them. No, no. I think the wooden, I, I know they have a lot of other styles of hooks now. That was about three years ago which I hear work a lot better depending on what your hand condition is. And if you do have like actual hand issues like carpal tunnel or arthritis or things like that where you can't hold anything heavy or you can't like grip, I hear that they do really help you a lot. If your hands work normally, yeah. I do know some people like them and it depends on which ones you've tried. I'm speaking about the wooden ones and mine were, I had a five, a six and a seven millimeter and the five was the best of them. So I think if you're using the smaller sizes, they're better, but definitely not the big ones. Oh, that's just my opinion. And I had, and customer service was so terribly rude to me. Oh my gosh. 
Jill, it was Jill. Hi, Jill. No, terrible, terrible. Bad feelings about that too. Oh, Amy Jo has a question about my tortoise. She's asking about turtles, wondering how you keep them at home when they're little and if they stay inside most of the time um, until they're big enough to fence in and if they have a pond. Mine are tortoises, so they are dry kind of desert animals. They just need drinking water. They don't, they like the heat, they like it dry. When it is wet or cold, they just hide in a bush, like they don't even come out. And they're, mine are old, mine are about 40 years old, 45, I don't know, it's hard to imagine, maybe 50, I don't know. They're old, they get up to be like 100 and something, 150, so it's not like they're old and dying, they're just like, you know, getting to be middle-aged and they don't, they don't need a lot of water and they were always too big to get out from underneath the fence. They, they seem like they've been that big since I've had them, to be honest which has been, how old was my child? So maybe about 10 years. So yes, what to do, dig a, like a ditch kind of thing, like a bowl shape in your yard and put a plastic pipe, like an empty plastic pipe in the center of it and wire, like chicken wire around the edge. Pour concrete into there and kind of smooth it out so you have your concrete on the chicken wire so that holds the shape of the concrete. Make, you can make any shape you want and the drain pipe at the bottom or the pipe at the bottom turns into a drain pipe and you can get a plug from the hardware store like a bath, bathtub plug to fit the top of it and then you just use that uh, fill that up with water and then pull the drain. You can put some stones and stuff underneath where you actually put the drain so the water can drain out. And you can kind of just make a nice little pond for them in your yard. And if they are small, if you have turtles and they're small, you can get that um, fencing, you know, like little vegetable fencing, the cute stuff from Home Depot or whatever, and just kind of fence in a nice safe area or at least where they can't get out of your gate or fence like that. So that's what I have done and it worked out really great. Um, totally do the chicken wire pipe thing. That worked out a treat. Like really it worked out a treat. Michelle A asks, she has a bunch of yarn. None of the yarn has labels. How should I tell what weight they are and what hook to use? I would do wraps per inch. So take a ruler and see how many times you can gently wrap the yarn per inch and then compare that uh, number of how many wraps you have per inch to what kind of yarn it is. I would use the yarn conversion chart on my website. I had it as free, I don't want to charge for it, but uh, my website charges, like the gateway for processing each transaction charges me like 50 cents, so I was like losing 50 cents per download. I don't know how to put it up otherwise, like I don't know, I should figure it out. But right now it's free with purchase, so if you go to the website, secretyarnray.com, purchase a pattern, it's just automatically free. So like everybody's getting one for free, but you do have to kind of make a purchase just so I don't go broke. But on that chart is wraps per inch and then you can check what yarn you actually have and just maybe make a note what yarn weight it is. Sandra Tanner asks, you said that you don't make doilies, do you like them? I do like doilies. My grandmother, I was raised with doilies, so I guess they're not like super special to me. They're something that my grandparents had. So to me, they represent kind of like old fashioned crochet. And I remember how long it took my very experienced uh, grandmother to make. So I think that one is skipping a generation. I admire them a lot. Like I cherish them and I, I have total respect for doilies. I don't want to make any yet. I never say never. I could totally get into it later, but for right now, I just like to use bigger yarn. Age Aruma asks, if there were no ice yarns in the world, what would you use? What? <gasps> oh my gosh. Well, then I would go to Hobium because it's the same yarn as ice, though so I'm familiar with it. I'm comfortable with it. I'd have to suck it up and pay more, but what do you do? Hmm. I would totally just go to Hobium, I guess. Or I'd totally check out Hobie and find a freight forwarder from Denmark. I'd have to do something like that. I would definitely find a manufacturer in Europe. I would find a manufacturer in Turkey or Denmark and keep buying straight from the factory. That would totally be what I would do. Because I'm frugal like that. I like a deal. Burmer Pap asks, I'm wondering, are you, do you self-support or do you go to the shops and the market for your food? 
The only thing I have at my house are chickens that lay eggs. Everything else I buy from a store. Nairobi is pretty, it's a pretty like large metropolis. There's a lot going on here. It's like a little epicenter for Africa or at least East Africa. Definitely the epicenter for East Africa. Uh, lots of shops, lots of shopping malls, lots of food. We pay more for imported food. We pay less for fruit and veg. So I totally buy everything from the stores, except condiments, like I do get some condiments from Amazon, right? Pickles, pickles, love pickles. Amy B asks, what other kinds of fibers can I use instead of cotton? I find cotton a little scratchy when, I, when using it for washcloths or even when she's crocheting. Now it depends on the cotton. Cotton is a great fiber, but what I have found is, what am I going to call it? Where is it? I think I even threw it in the bucket over there. Okay, let me get it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Where, is it? Where are you at, Willis? Willis? I didn't. Where did I put it then? Oh, here it is. Okay, and then let me get a little baby cotton. Where's a little baby cotton? Oh, I should have got the one with the label, shouldn't I? No. So this is the cotton you get, or I got off of Amazon, sugar and cream. And you can see on the spin of it, it is not soft. It's like string. It's nice string, but it's string. I didn't know better. I thought that's what, you know, was up. The pink one is baby cotton. This is like butter. This is like full fat butter. It's the softest, sweetest, most delicious yarn. The yellow one, yes, it hurts my fingers too. This one, this baby cotton from Ice, what? This is the bomb diggity. This is butter. This is string. This is butter. So you can still use cotton. Use a good cotton. This isn't the cotton. This is good string, really good string. And if you want to make like scrubby things or tough things or, you know, stuff you just want to be like, it's a cotton washcloth, take it, like craft fairs or whatever, go ahead. If you're making something that you actually want to touch, get yourself some baby cotton 100G. Oh my gosh. It's, it's softer than my skin. My skin is probably damaging the yarn, really. It's so great. So that's the difference with cotton. I'll stop going on. I can go on about this so much. Don't, oh, don't start me. I'm right into baby cotton 100G, right into it. Debbie Platt asks, does your African gray get out of his cage? Yes, he does. He comes out, uh, he really likes to shower. He like hunkers down like in the shower on the, like we have a towel rack and stuff, but he goes down like where the water lands on the floor and he stands right there and just, just like loves it. I'm like, what's up with you, dude? He loves it. And another question she asks, are you going to film your unboxing those lovely packages you received? Yes, I am. I am going to go, uh, yes, yes, I am. I'm going to, I'm going to, Yes, I am. I'm going to pick up the mail one more time and then film both ones together. Maybe next Sunday for a live unboxing. That might be fun, right? Let's see. But yes, I totally am. I just want to save it and I want to film when I'm doing it. Mary Hardin de Espaccio asks, sorry about your name. Sorry about me pronouncing your name. Happy about your name. It's beautiful. Do any of your kids or... Do any of your kids crochet or have interest in crochet? Yes, they do. My daughter crochets. She's totally good at it. Like I just, I'm kind of a bit mean. I was like, you know, double crochet, chain one, turn, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, okay, and she'll do it. And I'm waiting for her to come and ask me because I know I said it too fast, but just to see if she can do it. She totally does it. I was like, I was like setting you up for a trick. Like I was tricking you and, and she, I'm like, no, I was just being mean. She didn't even ask me. She's really good at crocheting. My two little boys, they're five and six, they want to crochet or they did last year, but they're, I think they're just not old enough yet to, um, you know, to really get it. 
but they have interest in it. My 12 year old, almost 13, boo hoo, um, I've taught him to crochet and so he knows how to do it, but he just doesn't do it, which is fair. I believe in making your kids learn as many skills as you have and then they can choose to use the skill or just keep it in the bank. So that's my strat with my kids. Her next question is, do they help you design any projects? Yes, they do. They, well, they come up with ideas, like, you know, things that they want or the color things that they want. And we kind of build on it together. Like Lava Blanket. It didn't start as Lava Blanket, but it's evolved into Lava Blanket. And that was an idea from my 12-year-old. And my daughter just does her own thing. She's making necklaces and like all sorts of stuff. She's like a total rogue, freeform crocheter. And her last question is, do you do tapestry crochet at all? No, I don't. I don't use, I try not to even use two weight. I try to do like a three weight or a DK or above, like chunkier yarn, just so I can get more things done. Um, I just feel it's faster and it fits more into my lifestyle right now. Next question is from Grandy28. What breeds are my chickens? Ooh, I was supposed to find this out. I always get it wrong. There's so many, it's a Kenyan chicken, a local Kenyan chicken kind. Where's my phone? Oh, my son has my phone. Poop. Okay, let me find out what it is. Give me a minute. Kenyan chicken name, what are you? Kenyan chicken name. Kenyan chicken. Oh, it comes up with the restaurants, you know. Kenyan poultry breed, maybe breed. Kalege, I want to say Kalege. Oh, there it is. Hold on. I got it. I got it. I have to write it down. It's, a, it's the most difficult word for me. I know my Kenyan viewers are just going to laugh, but anyway. Kayan. Kayanji? Kayanji? Kay and Gigi. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. Kay and Yanji. Kay and Yanji. <laughs> I don't know. They're local. I call them local chickens. They are very like healthy. Like they're very. They don't get sick. They're super tough. Uh, they're not like. They're not meaty. I don't think they're meaty. People like the meat on them. But they're very, um, they're healthy. I didn't want to like chickens to like, you know, die and stuff like that. Next question also from Grandy28. Do you have either the pattern or tutorial for the pencil and ottoman underneath my pet bed? No, I don't. I winged it from my head, but we will be doing it for September this year after my mams and my other projects. So it's right here. And that was it for questions. Wow, that was so fun. So if you have any questions that I haven't answered, leave it in the comments underneath this podcast, and I'll be happy to answer them at the end of next week's podcast. So news of the week, and just kind of digressing from here on out, just into more other things. Husband's birthday is coming up on Sunday. Super excited. Been working on it forever. Saving forever. Can't wait for it. Big surprise. I can't talk about it until after Sunday, but next week I can totally tell you. I can't wait. Like literally... I could, like I'm having a hard time sleeping at night. Not even joking. Also, has anybody joined us for the live chats on Sunday morning that we've been doing? I think we did two. I don't know if I can do this one this on this Sunday coming. It depends what my husband's up to. But if he's busy off doing something, then I can totally pop in and say hi. It'd be great because I can finally tell you what his present is. Anyway, did you were you able to join us and did you enjoy it? I think we'll be doing that more regularly. If that's something of interest to you, let me know in the comments below. Love to get your feedback on that and see if you liked it. And now, yes it is, can't wait. So we're just going to start with the winner from last week and then I'll tell you what the question is for this week. You're totally going to get it. Like let me just say, everybody's going to know who this is. Ready? Da 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 da. Who is that? Yes, you do. She's also on our Facebook group. It is Christy GK. So, congratulations to Christy. 
so happy it was you. I was like, oh, look, it's Christy. So her comment was her favorite part of the crochet process, everything from the first row to the last. In other words, it started and now I can just relax in my chair and go, go, go and enjoy every minute. I'm totally with you, right? You have all your things nearby and you can just crochet. So the question of the week now, what you can comment underneath the video to hopefully win this week's sticker pack is what is your top crochet tip, trick or hack? We've been talking about this on a few of our Friday live chats and it has been so like eye-opening and mind-blowing and interesting that I really wanted more ideas from you that we could all kind of share together and then I can put a list on the website and have it available to everyone not just people who are part of the channel but people maybe on Facebook and in the rest of the crochet community because there's some great ideas that I would have never thought of now this one I think it was even from Facebook was to use a Tic Tac container uh, in your whip baskets to keep some stitch markers and a needle and I ran out and bought Tic Tacs but my needles are too long for a Tic Tac box so then I went and like scoured online because I was home <laughs> I scoured online in Kenya all the candy containers that I could have delivered to my house and found Mentos chewing gum look at that size Perfect, so clover needles can fit inside with some stitch markers and the label comes off pretty great. They're clear, little flip lid so you can get at whatever you put inside. And then just have a bunch of these, one in every whip basket. I was like, that's such a great idea. Wasn't my idea, it was a subscriber's idea. So if we can just share all these ideas and have a great list going on together, I thought that would be so great. So whatever your tip, trick, or hack is, leave it in the comments underneath this video and I will pick a random winner for next week. Plus, I'll put some of those tips on this Friday's live chat because we didn't even get through all of the tips and tricks last Friday. So if that's of interest to you, totally check out the live chats. Love to have you join us. Can't, I'm chewing gum like crazy, don't even joke. I'm like chewing gum, chewing gum, chewing gum. So that's what's been up at the urinary. What's been up at your house? Let me know and have a super great week. Thanks for inviting me over and I'll see you in the next video. neighborhood dudes these cute little sheep adorb in the ditch little sheep thank you appreciate it look he's eating <laughs> the papaya tree that's a little pow pow in there bye sheeps bye sheeps cute they usually go in this field it's a school they go over there and eat all the grass. They should come to my house. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, can you bring all your sheep into my compound? Thank you. All right, off to the bank. Nothing that fun, trying to be quick. Busy hooking at home, watching Longmire and hooking. So running to the bank and scooting back home. Gosh, that thing is loud. Can you hear that? Oh, Lordy. Jumble. That is like a beast machine. do uh, driving classes in there, I think. I don't know. No, key. <gasps> that's a good sign. Okay, well, that's not nice. Oh, look, it's so pretty. That's really pretty. I love whoever you are. 
Ooh, that's heavy. Mary, Mary, I got it. Oh, look, there's more back here. I don't want it to fall back. Wait. Can you see in here? Okay, I got it. I got it. That one. Poor thing. Gotta uncrunch it. That one got beaten. Oh my gosh, I should have brought a basket. And a box. Oh my gosh, it fits. Can I get it out? <laughs> gosh, how do I get it out? Oh my gosh. Okay, I gotta wrangle. Morning. I might need two hands. I gotta get it past that hinge. Okay, hold on, I'll be back. Okay, I think I got it. That is really very cool. Look at the hall, look at the hall. Lucky you, you I know, finally, right? Yeah. Just takes a few years. Yeah, you Right? <laughs> I did get interesting mail. Look at that. Oh, I'm excited. Everybody has mail envy. Oh my gosh, this is the biggest ever. How am I going to carry it? Look at all this greatness. Sorry about that envelope. I'm really sorry. Okay, loading this. Taking it to the car. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't even see. Who is this is from? L Lori, Lori, it's from you and it fit in my mailbox. That is so cool. Okay, I'll be back. Isn't that just gorge? I love it. So this is my favorite thing. Like I wear it, I wear it like all the time. Like, I, yeah. Oh, there's my power. Well, we knew that was gonna happen. Oh, well, this is the urinary in the dark. <laughs> this is what it looks like without bright lights. Oh, got fuzz right on my lip now. Not even joking. How, who has been, what, who has been stalking that website the last, this last, who has joined me for the Sunday chat? So it's Sunday morning, my time. So it's like middle of the night in North America. Great for Australia, great for the UK, great for Europe. Were you able to join us? I think we'll be starting to do that on a more regular basis on Sunday mornings in my time. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comments box down below. Love to hear your opinion about it. Am I just washing out completely now? I don't know why the sun, oh, it's afternoon.